So the previously Aquatrack controllers consist of <clears throat> the Microflex as a boiler controller, a tower controller, a closed loop controller, or a condensate diverter. The Slimflex comes only in the tower model. The PromTrack uh, Prom is a, a newer controller, which won't be covered here today. And we have the Aegis for boiler or tower, and the Multiflex uh, 5 and 10 relay for boiler and tower. So those are what we're going to cover today. These controllers were primarily designed for boiler and cooling applications using the prominent sensors, um, but they can be used for multiple other things through a 4 to 20 milliamp inputs. Uh, any plant signal can be brought into the controller, uh, the multiflex or the Aegis controller, for a monitoring uh, control or data logging of those values those processes. So even though the controllers are meant to be a cooling tower controller or a boiler controller, if you add a 4 to 20 input card on those controllers, <clears throat> the Aegis and the Multiflex, you can monitor tank level or a hardness analyzer or temperature sensor. Anything that's 4 to 20 milliamp, you can bring it in. So these uh, inputs add to the versatility of your treatment program. Um, you could also add extra sensors because these controllers, the, the larger ones, are very flexible. You can put in <clears throat> multiple uh, sensors. Uh, I'd like to talk about a customer in, in California that uh, has a lettuce um, application where they have several lines that need to be treated with bleach. And so the Multiflex has only ORP sensor inputs and turns on... Uh, bleach pumps, and that's all it does. <clears throat> so, this adds a lot of uh, flexibility to, to the larger controller there. Digital input signals uh, via dry contact can also be brought in for monitoring or control or just simply for data logging. We'll start with the Microflex. <clears throat> and when you order the Microflex, it comes pre-configured with uh, two digital inputs, a water meter, and a flow switch, two analog inputs, which would be conductivity and temperature. <coughs> Excuse me. And when I say analog inputs, sometimes um, I think the prominent family has often used the term analog for 4 to 20 milliamp input or output, and the Octrack company always used the analog uh, more technically correct uh, as for any analog signal, which a conductivity uh, would be considered an analog signal as it, it's uh, anything that's zero to 100% as opposed to digital being on or off. So point is, when I use the term analog in, in this presentation today, I'm speaking of, of any analog signal, not just 420. So the Microflex has a, a conductivity and a temperature input. It has uh, two digital outputs that are power relays, one for bleed and one for chemical feed. It has three communication options we'll get to in a minute. <clears throat> Looking under the hood, we can see the display. There is also, all of our controllers have a run status light. And uh, a good way to, to if your controller is uh, not behaving properly, is to check to see if the run light is, is on. The, the Microflex is the only controller that doesn't have a battery. When you press enter, information or changes you made is, is entered into double E prompt. It does have two powered relays. I've uh, exploded the bottom termination here so that we can see that uh, this terminal is the inhibitor output. The BS and BV means if you had, uh, for example, a blowdown solenoid, you just need power to open the solenoid you would uh, land that on this terminal, mark BS. If you have a motor operated valve, you need power to open and power to close. And that's what the B valve means. You would need both solenoid and valve terminations. <clears throat> this has one five amp fuse. Thank you, Jim. It has a 15 volt supply for the thermal flow switch or for water meters. Pretty much we can use uh, 
our external equipment. A dry contact or thermal flow switch input, which would be right here. Contact head or water meter input here. Your conductivity and temperature inputs are here. Notice that they're marked green, white, black, and red. All the prominent contact uh, conductivity sensors that are compatible with this controller will have those four colored wires. The black and the red being the conductivity, the white and green for temperature. And if you use the CTF conductivity flow, uh, conductivity temperature flow switch sensor, it's a six wire sensor. You'll have the four colored wires here, plus you'll have a brown wire for the flow switch and a blue wire for the 15 volts. So it's easy to connect that sensor uh, as the, the colors are the colors are marked red on the control board. <clears throat> so let's take a look at what else we have here. The keypad on the Microflex uses the five function keypad that's on all the newer model controllers. We have an enter key on the left, an escape key on the right, and cursor movement keys in the middle. This is an adhesive-backed uh, um, keypad. If it should stop working, you can peel it off of the face, and you'll see a picture later that shows there's a slot in the, the, um, the cover of the Microflex uh, where you can feed the ribbon through. So this is easily changeable in the field if you have to. Uh, this Microflex has a quick release latches. The three options I mentioned. <clears throat> One option is a 4 to 20 milliamp output. That's on conductivity only, not temperature or anything else. And this allows uh, you to run the conductivity variable to uh, a chart recorder or to the uh, plant DCS if possible, if needed. The second option would be to have uh, an alarm, a dry contact alarm relay output which has no power, it's just a dry contact. You can put uh, whatever power that you want up to 240 volts so that you can turn on a light or alarm or run again a digital signal to a DCS. And this, <clears throat> this uh, option, these two options, uh, of, of these three options, I'll get to the third in a minute. They plug into this, um, this plug that's just to the left and below the the display. Obviously, there, since there's only one plug, you can only have one of the options. And you don't have to have an option, but you can have either of these two options. And the third option is the LB option or the Ethernet port, which allows you to connect this controller to the plant network. On the plant network, anyone in and having access to that plant network with a PC can connect to the controller with a, with a browser and they will get uh, what we call live view. The live view also has um, a menu off to the side which allows you to edit the program. Uh, this could be covered more in depth uh, in another webinar later. So you can see that this third card has an ethernet port on it. It also has a link and active light. The link light tells you that the, the cable is actually connected on both ends successfully and the active light, if it comes on, uh, tells you that there's actually traffic on the network. So it may not be traffic to this controller. Uh, any traffic on the network in the plant would, would blink this light. So you know that uh, that helps you uh, determine if the cable is working or not. Once you have this live view, you can change the program, clear alarms, change alarms, change set points or just monitor the process. There's also a, a little bit of a diagnostic page. And this is the, uh, the view of a boiler. There's some diagnostics here letting you know what's currently happening. That's what you get with the Ethernet board. The SlimFlex is similar to the MicroFlex. It's, it's pre-configured from the factory based on how it's ordered. And it's not terribly flexible in what you can do with the relays. They, they come from the factory a certain way, and that's how they work. Uh, the larger controllers, the Aegis and the Multiflex, are totally different. 
any input or output can be configured any way that you, you would like to have it work. So <clears throat> some of the differences of the SlimFlex is there's only one version, and it's a, it's a cooling tower version, but it has four relays. So it's going to have the, the chemical pump or inhibitor, it's going to have a blowdown relay, and two times time biocides as a base unit. And there are some options here. So otherwise, the digital inputs, there's two, the water meter and the flow switch, the same as the microflex. The two analog inputs are conductivity and temperature. And there is an option uh, of the two time biocides. You could give, give up a time biocide and, and have an optional uh, pH sensor and acid output. Or you could have an ORP sensor with a bleach control output, but only one or the other. There's just that, that fourth relay is, is an optional for a second biocide or a pH control or an ORP control. So those are your four digital outputs. One for blowdown, one to feed a chemical, typically an inhibitor, and the two time biocides or one time biocide with an acid or one time biocide with a bleach has the same three communication options as the microflex and we'll get to those again in a minute uh, it has the run and relay status lights here you can see in the exploded view down at the bottom off to the far right we have okay we'll get it next time we have the uh, indicator lights so you can tell currently relays one and two are on and three and four are not on so if, if the controller says that relay one is on and you, you open and look and the light is not on and your pump's not running, then you, you know that, that you have a problem with the uh, controller. If the light is on and your pump's not on, then you have a problem with the pump. This controller and all the other controllers now have the battery backup. Uh, this keeps the memory of the program whenever it's powered down. <clears throat> As the four relays, R1 through R4, has a five amp relay fuse located right here above the power input. It also has a 100 milliamp logic fuse right here below the transformer. That is uh, soldered to the boards. It's not uh, replaceable in the field. Uh, have a 15 volt supply, as you did on the Microflex. What do you think, Jim? Keep the current voltage. Okay. Uh, 15 volt supply. It also has the dry contact flow input for a flow meter and a water meter input or contact header paddle wheel. There's conductivity and temperature inputs as the microflex, same as the microflex. It has a 200, uh, a 120 to 230 volt selector switch. So if you need to use this uh, and, and the only supply you have is 240 volts AC you can uh, switch this over to a 240 unit. The um, not mentioned, the, the Microflex does not have this selector switch, but from the factory can be uh, uh, can constructed as a 240 volt uh, unit. <clears throat> and again, the color coded terminals. This is the back of the, the cover of the Microflex, of uh, the Slimflex. <clears throat> and you can see the, the SlimFlex has a, the display and the keypad on it. This is the, the, the back of the display. Should the display uh, fail for any reason and need to be replaced, uh, two little bolts here with nuts on them, pull those off. The display comes off. There's a ribbon cable connected here that goes <clears throat> along these pins up in the top here. So it's, it's easy to replace, uh, it's, it's an inexpensive part, uh, easy to re replace in the field. Here's the slot I mentioned that's on all of our uh, newer controllers where the ribbon cable for the keypad uh, feeds through the, the door and in this case, the keypad is connected to these pins right over here, which of course you would see when you take, take one apart. So the adhesive back keypad is, is easy to replace in the field as well. The three options are the same for the SlimFlex as they are the MicroFlex. There's only one slot, so you can only have one of the three, four to 20 milliamp output, a dry contact alarm relay, or an ethernet board. And 
one thing to note, if you do order an Ethernet board, you have to make sure you order it for the proper controller because the live view picture that comes with this Ethernet board when you connect is on the chip on the card. So if you get a Microflex Ethernet card and you plug it into a SlimFlex, you'll have the wrong picture here. <clears throat> So the SlimFlex has uh, it's like a micro with with two BIOSI timers uh, added on, and uh, one of those could be a PH or an ORP option. Prompt Track is our newest newest controller, uh, newest controller, well, something like that. And we're, we won't be covering that this week. Uh, we're, we'll have a, a whole uh, webinar associated to that. The Aegis is probably the most uh, advanced of our controllers. Uh, but not the largest. <clears throat> Comes pre-configured, uh, programmed, if you will, from the the factory based on what I, uh, what sensors that you order with it, and whether it's boiler or cooling. But all of that could be changed in the field. You could take a boiler controller and make it to a cooling tower if you wanted to. Any of the inputs and outputs can be changed, except in the Aegis, there are three of the analog inputs that are written in stone, if you will. We'll get to that in a second. So all the programming can be edited in the field via the keypad or through the Ethernet connection. And the Ethernet connection uh, is um, accessible via a, a, um, a browser like uh, Windows Explorer or Firefox or those, any, any browser can connect uh, through Windows. Um, to the controller, and then you can edit the controller uh, or monitor the process, or you can use Trackster software, and the Trackster software differs a little bit in that you can download data and make uh, a graph. Uh, the, the Aegis and the Multiflex store data, which allows downloading. The SlimFlex and the Microflex do not store data. The Aegis has eight digital inputs, which can be used for the flow switches are water meters, uh, paddle wheels, and, and contact head water meters. So if you had a, a dual tower on this controller, you could have two flow switches and two water meters. Um, you could have uh, alarm level switches in your uh, chemical tanks. Uh, when the tanks get down to a low level, uh, the float switch changes, and that could be brought in on a digital input, which could trigger alarm um, so that the operators know that they are low on chemical and need to order some. So we have date, eight digital inputs there that can be programmed for any of any of those uh, type of inputs. Seven analog inputs, uh, inputs, outputs, uh, say inputs and outputs because the analog signals uh, can be four to 20 milliamp signals which can be in or out. And these are all plug-in modules for the, uh, the four to 20. So your analog inputs can be from conductivity, temperature, pH, ORP, corrosion rate, or any 4 to 20 milliamp signal in, any 4 to 20 milliamp signal out. The digital outputs are going to be five powered relays and four pulse frequency outputs. Now the powered relays are typical that you would use to power a, a blowdown solenoid or to run a, a a diaphragm pump, they're, they're um, typically expecting one amp uh, of current, not enough to start a, a Sigma pump or a, a larger pump that has a, a fractional horsepower motor on it. If you have uh, the use of a fractional horsepower motor, we need to install interposing relay or a motor start relay. And in order to do that and put that in the box, we are offer larger enclosures. So if you need um, motor start relays, those are available. We put them in a larger box, and, and the, from the factory, everything is, is inside the box, in the NEMA box there. The Multiflex, this is the top board, has a uh, battery backup, again, has a 15 volt supply for water meters and uh, thermal flow switches. This seven analog I.O. points, three of which are going to be uh, written in stone, if you will. There's a conductivity, a temperature, and a 4 to 20 input 
analogs for this controller. And these are hardwired, so they can't be changed to something else. The other two, uh, the other four inputs, outputs, are via plug-in driver cards. And these plug-in driver cards are used on Aegis and Multiflex. They, they have uh, two inputs on each card, maximum. Um, and they come in a variety of cards for pH and ORP, conductivity and temperature, corrosion rates, and uh, depending on what your needs are, you can choose which cards you wish to plug in. There's two slots here, so you have four more analog I.O. points, and with these three, that's your seven analog points on the ages. You could, you, one of the cards is a 4 to 20 output card. It's the only analog output that we have. It's a 4 to 20 output. And you can send any of your analog input signals along to a chart recorder or to run the speed of a pump or to a DCS system so that the customer can monitor those uh, analog points on the controller. So A and G, A, B and G are pre-configured and, and written in stone. The other four are selectable based on the cards that you purchase. We have on the multiflex on the Aegis here, we have eight dry contact inputs for flow switches and water meters, O through V. And um, the Aegis and the multiflex controllers now have uh, letters assigned to the sensor inputs and the relay outputs where the microflex and slimflex do not. This is something that, that Aquatrack has pretty much done uh, since the beginning. Uh, when you're uh, scrolling through the menu, if you look to the top right corner, you will always see a letter or a number uh, based on, a, on an input or an output. If there's no letter or number there, you're, you're looking at a system menu or an alarm menu. So it makes it a lot easier uh, to know which sensor is wired where. Um, it helps for troubleshooting if you're if you're calling for tech support. You can say it's input O or P or Q, and that helps us uh, determine the problem. The display is easily replaced. There's a couple of bolts here and a row of pins that hold this display to the top board. There's also, as an option, a dry contact alarm relay, which would plug in here and uh, allow you to turn on a, a, a light or an alarm or send a, a digital contact to a DCS uh, warning people that, that the controller has a problem. Also we see here the core board, this red board in the middle. The core board has the Ethernet port uh, which makes that standard on the Aegis. The Ethernet's not an option. And uh, the core board has two, uh, two sets of pins on the back. That's the only means of, of holding the board uh, to the controller. So it's, it's easy to, to pull out. The Aegis core board is a Rabbit Core microprocessor, uh, 30 megahertz, 215, 512K uh, flash memory, 512 of SRAM. Uh, it has all the program and data history stored in it. <coughs> and uh, it has a firmware <coughs> uh, port that allows us to make upgrades. Firmware upgrades are not done in the field generally. Um, they, the core would have to be sent back to the factory. The Ethernet port allows LAN connection at a 10 base T speeds and uh, again the network uh, link and active lights are available. Are on the uh, core board. Underneath the top board is the relay board. <clears throat> and this lower board has the actual relays for the um, powered outputs. <clears throat> and the outputs relays one through five, uh, seen here. Relay one just has a normally open contact so you can run a chemical pump or a solenoid. Relays two through five have normally open and normally closed contacts. You can run um, a motorized, motorized uh, blowdown valve for a boiler application, typically. Or in the case where a cooling tower has a motorized ball valve, you would need one of these four relays. So you could, you could control up to four boilers from this one controller. 
the <clears throat> frequency controlled outputs six through nine are used to run the speed of uh, a frequency pump. It's less expensive than converting the signal in the controller to 4 to 20 milliamps and then reconverting the 4 to 20 milliamps back to a pulse to stroke your diaphragm pump. So it's a less expensive way to, to run the speed of your pump, particularly in a cooling tower for acid control for your pH or or P uh, bleach control, <clears throat> instead of simply turning the pump on and off around a set point, now you speed the pump up or slow it down based on that set point. So there's four of those. We have a six amp, 6.3 amp fuse for these relays, the five power relays. We have a 100 milliamp logic fuse for the, uh, the rest of the control activity, the controller itself. And we have the 120-230 volt uh, selector switch here. <clears throat> Next, we have the the largest uh, controller in our arsenal, the Multiflex. Comes in two sizes: the M5 with five relays and the M10. Here is the M5. Uh, based on your order, comes pre-programmed from the factory, all of which can be edited in the field. Uh, the same uh, industrial five key keypad, uh, adhesive backed with ribbon cable for easy replacement, six digital inputs, seven analog I.O. points, uh, the same plug-in cards as we talked about in the ages, analog inputs from conductivity, temperature, pH, ORP, corrosion rates, 4 to 20 milliamp in and 4 to 20 milliamp out has five powered relays. So <clears throat> this controller has only driver card slots. There are no uh, pre-wired uh, onboard sensors that are not configurable. So you can put, um, you could have seven uh, ORP sensors on this controller. There's four slots for the seven inputs. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. <clears throat> this slot is only uh, a single I.O. point. Has the battery backup, 15 volt supply for water meters and flow switches, 4 to 20 milliamp loops. Has seven analog sensors, A through G. Four card slots, as we've shown. Six dry contact digitals, O through T, for flow switches and water meters, uh, easily replaced display with two screws and a row of pins, a serial port for a phone modem. Uh, the the Multiflex has the ability of the very old fashioned but very useful telephone modem so you don't have to bother your customer with trying to get to your controller remotely and going through the firewall of their network simply use a phone modem and uh, you don't have the network headaches. And also the core board, um, easily replaceable core board with the ethernet port, <clears throat> the same uh, rabbit core microprocessor with the uh, memory, data, logging, uh, upgrade, upgradable firmware, the Ethernet port, the link and activity indicators, same board and and, uh, and firmware for both the M5 and M10. Both uh, M5 and M10 controllers have the same firmware on them. So the difference is the hardware that you have. The M5 only has five relays, six digital inputs, and seven analog I/O points. The M10 has uh, twice as much. So if we pull out the top control board of the Multiflex <clears throat> M5, we get to see the relay board underneath. And here where we can see, and I've ex uh, exploded the, the view of the terminals here, we can see the dry contact alarm uh, terminals. We have the relays one through five. Uh, notice again, uh, relay one is normally open only. 
two through five have normally open and normally closed. So again, we could do four boilers or four motor operated valves. <clears throat> uh, each relay has an indicator light that comes on when the relay is energized. There is a 110 to 220 uh, switch here, which, which uh, is typically set at the factory. We have one six amp fuse for the relays. We have a 1.5 amp logic fuse for the rest of the controller for the electronics. And you'll notice that on this side, there is room for another five relays. So this board is actually the same board that's used in the M10. We just don't populate it with the other components. <clears throat> and in the middle are the, uh, the terminals for power that comes into the controller. This is the ribbon cable that goes to the top board and, um, and a neutral bus for all your power relays. The M10 and the last of today's presentation, the uh, Multiflex M10 is the same as the M5 with double of, of all the I.O. Pre-configured based on your order, um, but can be changed in the field. All programming can be edited with the keypad or through the Ethernet port. <clears throat> so there's 12 digital inputs, 14 analog I.O. points. Uh, the same choices are available here with the plug-in boards and 10 powered relays. So here we can see that there are now seven card slots and with two I.O. points on each, that's your 14 analog points. We have the 15 volt supply terminals on, on the board, uh, four terminals, two places for our water meters, flow switches, power of four to 20 milliamp loop. The um, <clears throat> so selectable analogs, uh, A through N as in Nancy, are, are, are in the uh, seven slots here. So uh, all, all the slots in this particular card have been filled. 12 dry contact digital inputs now, uh, O through the letter Z. Uh, again, the display is easily replaced. Uh, the serial port for the phone modem, in this case, you can see that the, the phone modem has been plugged in, and the same core board. Same core board with the, the Ethernet port and the link and active indicators, same firmware. <clears throat> now the relay board for the M10, the same as the M5, and now you can see the terminals are available and the extra indicator lights and the relays have been populated on the bottom of the board, all ready to go. The one and a half amp fuse for the electronics, and now we have a second fuse for the second set of five relays. And the way to remove a fuse <clears throat> in these cylinders is at the bottom, if you look up at the, uh, the fuse holder, you can see a cap that has a slot. And if you push in on the slot and turn it the uh, quarter turn counterclockwise, the spring-loaded fuse will push the cap out uh, along with the fuse holder. <clears throat> These um, 6.3 amp fuses come in kits from, from the factory here. They can also be found sometimes at a radio shack and certainly electrical supply house. Um, but we have kits that have uh, like 10, 10 of the 6 amp fuses and 5 of the logic fuses. Uh, if you have two or three controllers, uh, a good idea to have that kit with you. <clears throat> Should uh, someone plug in a device that's um, that's not that's, that's shorted out and, and causes uh, too much amperage. Same with the run indicator uh, right here, <clears throat> and uh, the exploded view shows the uh, relay six is like relay one; it's normally open. Seven, eight, nine, and ten are normally open and normally closed. So you could have eight boilers on one M10. That's the hardware of the, the main uh, prominent controllers for uh, cooling tower and boilers. Future webinars, uh, we will cover programming schemes, um, how to use the keypad, through programming through the keypad. 
We'll talk about the communications with phone modem and Ethernet and uh, browser. Uh, we could talk more about the Aegis controller with uh, the Modbus option. Talk about wireless internet options for all of the controllers uh, if they have e uh, Ethernet port. And we uh, will have uh, sessions concerning sensors and applications. So we'll cover most of the prominent sensor technology and 